sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. But what do we do? We take that sad heart and we just give it drugs so it doesn't feel it anymore. We take that experience of going to the house of mourning and gaining something and we take that away from people and rather give them a celebration of life. It's wrong. It, it, it's not going to do what it's supposed to and your heart will not be made better. Your heart will be for the worst because of it. I've experienced it myself when I went to my, my, my grandmother-in-law's funeral. And here I was with a woman preacher standing up there, right? Hearing directly from the Lord Jesus the hardest, the most personal, the most intense sermon I have ever heard ministered directly to my heart from the Word of God in spite of the preacher. In spite of who was standing up there. Why? Because I stepped into the house of mourning. And for my grandmother-in-law, and for that woman, I went there and I opened the Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And regardless of whatever that, that heathen witch was preaching up there, I heard true words preached to my heart. True words preached to my being. And I heard the best sermon I've ever heard personally from the Lord Jesus Christ in that moment. I can still take you back there. And it was fantastic. Had I just decided to ignore and to remove myself from that house of mourning, I wouldn't have experienced that. And the sorrow that came after that feeling, all the emotions that were going on at that time in my life. I actually remember coming back and, and spread out in, in the driveway outside of my house, this sermon ministering to my heart continued as I poured over the Word of God, as it taught me, and as it, as it moved me, and as it gave me this great feeling. And that was, that was a pivotal, pivotal moment in my life that got me to the position where I'm at. A, a moment where I became, I became truly sold out onto the fact that I was going to stay steadfast in the way of God regardless of what was going on in my life, regardless of the situations in my life, who was with me or who was against against me, I did not care. But in that moment, being having the scriptures in mourning, pouring over my soul, and then later on in that driveway, I can take you to the place where I just laid sprawled out. Any passerby could have seen it, hearing the word of God being teached to me. I will not change that for the world. It all started because I went to the house of mourning, and I laid what was taught. I saw the end of all men and laid what was taught to my heart, and allowed for the sorrow of the moment to take that sad countenance and make my heart better. And I was much encouraged by it. So we can either be strengthened by mourning, which is a long help, where your heart is strengthened and improved and grows greater. Or you can take laughter and celebration and try to make that into your short-term help. You can either take the pill of laughter and take the pill of celebration and take the pill of literally and, and, and just, just miss out on something so much Greater. But the wise do this, verse 4. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. And there's your dividing point, where, where, where either you, you are a fool and just constantly seeking after the celebration and the rejoicing, or you are wise and you are willing to go into the house of mourning, have your heart improved, have your, have your mind, will, and emotion strengthened, and be encouraged in the things of God. Solomon here says it's better. It's better to go to the house of mourning. It's better to be sad and of that countenance. These things are better for you. Why? Because it's a long-lasting help. It's a long-lasting strengthening. It's not just that pill to make your problems go away. 